today we are going to talk about SSS certificate, a way to scale the SSH access. My name is Pulkit Vaishnav. Uh, I'm working as DevOps engineer for three years and I'm currently working at MoEngage. I, I have worked in different domains like digital marketing, CDN and e-commerce in the companies like PackageZoom, uh, MoEngage and Cairo. I'm DevOps enthusiast and a Linux fan. So the agenda of today's talk is what are the traditional methods to use the SSH then we'll discuss what are the centralized authentication approaches which are scalable but what and what problems they have. Then we'll have a adventurous ride of the SSH certificates then we'll have a quick demo and we'll discuss about the features of SSH certificate and at the last we'll discuss limitation and the solutions. So here you can see a hospital. Uh, in the hospital there is one one ladder and there is one helicopter uh, a ladder is a regular way to access the hospital and to get the platinum access you can come using the helicopter at mo engage uh, we were using the regular approach for the ssh access to provide our developers but uh, we wanted a, a solution which was scalable which was easy to set up and which is secure so we come to a solution of SS certificates using which we performed, uh, we, we got all the things, it was secure, we, we, we have so many nice features like uh, role based SSH. Okay, so before starting uh, about SSH certificate, what SSH is? Uh, SSH is a client server based protocol uh, to access the remote machine on an unsecured network or sorry remote machine securely over an unsecured network so we all need to uh, ssh into the machine either that can be for debugging that can be for setting up anything or to check the performance of the server here are some common commands which you 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 would have used to ssh into the server now there are some traditional ways uh, so password best password authentication to ssh into the servers uh, we set a password and when we ssh we we enter the password uh, to access the server the problem with the password based authentication is password can be cracked can be leaked or password passwords are predictable and nowadays we have a problem like we have so many passwords of different applications so sometimes we forget uh, forget the password and we lost the access of the server. I, I recently had, had, had this kind of incident. Now the second is public key based authentication. Here, here we have access key via PM files. Like some cloud provider provides you a private file and using those files you can SSH into the server. Problem with this method is if your key is leaked, your that private PM key file is leaked, your, your uh, system is compromised. The other way is public key authentication method in which you we, we add the public key file of, of the user to the authorized key file of the server and every time a user adds or delete from the system we update the authorized key file. Now here on scale like, uh, like uh, for example you have hundreds of users and thousands of servers. In that case management of this uh, public key on all the servers is, is a pretty hard problem. So are there any alternatives? Yes, yes there are. Uh, we can use some central authentication services like LDAP, Kerberos or Active Directory. But these solutions have some problems like they are hard to install, they are hard to configure and uh, during an, an incident they are single point of failure. So let's say uh, you have an incident like your uh, centralized server went down or your cloud provider has our outage or the DNS outage, you, you will lock out yourself from your own system. That would be a nightmare for any, any developer. Now SSS certificate, it comes as a savior like Kung Fu Panda. It's very easy to set up, low maintenance, secure. And there are so many cool features like role based access and the certificate validity. We'll discuss this in detail in the further slides. Uh, 
Here are the benefits of SAS certificates. It's cost, cost efficient. So you don't have to uh, set up a, a new infrastructure. Let's say if you use LDAP, you have to uh, set up a different service for it. You have to scale your servers for that. If your number of ser servers increase of, on your infrastructure, you have to scale your uh, centralized authentication service as well. It's simple to set up. You just have to make a couple of changes on your uh, uh, server and you are ready to go. And it's flexible. It has many features like you can provide role based access. You can add the certificate validity and there are some host based access you can provide using it. Now who uses it? There are companies like Facebook, Uber, Netflix, Lyft and we at the Moengage use uh, certificate based authentication methods. There are some uh, open source projects like Bless, PEM, SSH by Uber and we recently open sourced a project uh, Easy SSH. In this talk we are going to discuss about the concept behind the SSH certificates. Now here how SSS certificate works. Uh, before that uh, what SSS certificate is. SSS certificate is nothing but a certificate based authentication method. And it's, it's, it's a certificate authority. It works like a certificate authority and your certificate authority have a public key and a private key. You will populate this public key to all your servers uh, and you will mark this key as your trusted CA user key file. Now, when a user request, when a user requests that I want access of, I want SSH access, what you will do? You will take the public key from the user you, and you will generate an intermediate certificate using the private key file. The private key file will sign your intermediate certificate from the public key of the user. And using that intermediate certificate, uh, you will give that intermediate certificate to the user and user then will be able to SSH into all the servers according to the accessibility of that certificate. Now, what are the features of intermediate certificate? Why do we need an uh, intermediate certificate or why should we use intermediate certificate? There are features like certificate identity. So, uh, if you use any centralized system like LDAP, uh, it will manage all the users for you. Let's say if you have 100 users in, in your organization, LDAP will manage that on all the servers of the infrastructure. But uh, it comes with a cost because uh, you have to run the LDAP client on all the servers. But using SS certificates, you don't have to do it, but you will get the identity who is uh, accessing the server using the certificate identity to every certificate you provide a identity and you can track that identity in the logs of SSH. Then the certificate validity. Uh, we, we see that uh, in, in, a, in any organization people comes and leaves from, from, from the organization and if they have access of the infrastructure, if they ha have access of the SSH key, they can access your uh, entire infrastructure even after leaving the company. So what you can do, you can provide an intermediate certificate, uh, let's say for a day. He can access his infrastructure for a day only and after that uh, he has to uh, request for the new certificate so that he can able to access the certificate, uh, sorry, servers. Now the other is principles or role based access. So we can provide the role based access. There are so many roles uh, which we can create, let's say. If you have developers in your team, if you have ops in your team, if you have front end team, uh, then you can create different kinds of roles and you, you can provide access to those uh, servers only with which this person is associated with. And the last is instead of providing uh, access to a user, you can also provide access to a host. So this is why you should use the intermediate certificate. Let's uh, uh, let's go through the demo where we will 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 see how SSS certificate is working. So here we have three servers: CA server, a log server, and a Bob server. So Bob is in the backend team and he wants access of the log server. 
now we will generate intermediate certificate for him and provide him the SSH access. Here, I intentionally did a mistake. I, I want you guys to uh, correct me uh, what it is. So let's go through the demo. So here, uh, we'll generate the certificate authority using SSH key gen, hyphen T, RSA is the encryption type, and F is the output file which we want, that is the CA. Here we generated our SSH certificate, and here we have two files, as CA and CA.pub. Now we'll copy the CA.pub, and we'll paste it to the all the servers. Here in our case, it's a log server. We'll go to the log server and we'll copy our public key on this. So we'll uh, copy this file and paste it to the log server. Here we'll uh, create one file. Uh, I'm creating it in uh, etc ssh and ca.pub. I'll paste the uh, public key of the ca from here to this file. I'll save this file and now I need to uh, I need to add this file to to the SSD SSH configuration so that it will mark it as the trusted CA user. So I'll open the SSH configuration file that is etc SSH and SSD conf. At the end of file, we will add a line uh, that is trusted user CA keys and the path of the file where we created. That is etc ssh ca dot pub. We will we'll add this path and we will save this file and then we will go to the then we will go to the client here on the Bob's machine. We, we need to set up something. First, we will check whether Bob's have public or private key or not. So here we'll go and check whether uh, Bob has, so there's not. Uh, so we'll generate public private key for him using SSH keygen command. And SSH keygen hyphen T RSA we will provide the encryption type that is RSA. Now add your passphrase if it's recommended to add passwords when you generate the CA, uh, you can avoid here. So now we have the public and private key. ID RSA is the private key and ID RSA.pop is the public key of the uh, Bob. Now we'll copy uh, the public key of Bob and we'll generate an intermediate certificate uh, for him uh, from the certificate authority which we created. So we'll copy this public key and we'll go to the certificate authority server. Here we'll uh, uh, paste this file uh, in, in the new file bob.pub and we'll generate the certificate. See, we created the file, now, now we need to generate the certificate. So here ssh keygen is the command uh, using which we will generate the certificate minus s hyphen s is for the source file that is our ca which we created now we'll give him the identity of the file that is hyphen i and bob is the identity of the file now using hyphen n you can give uh, roles or principles which we were we discussed here you can see there is one developer principle, there is one ops principle and there is one Ubuntu principle. These are all the roles of any system. Now we'll add the validity of, uh, add the validity of uh, this certificate. So in this case, I'm giving it for one week. So hyphen V and plus one and now hyphen Z is for the unique number you give to this certificate identify whose certificate is it and finally the public key of the file that is bob.pub here you can see it is signed now we'll check the details of this certificate 
so here ssh keygen hyphen lf and the certificate name that is bob hyphen cert dot pub so now here you can see it's it's a certificate user certificate it is created from this public key signed by the ca now here we have key id that is bob we the serial number which we gave that is one and it is valid from 20 20 to 27 and here are the principal files developers ops and ubuntu critical options are there uh, which are some advanced topic which we are not going to discuss in this talk but here are the extensions which you can uh, change using hyphen o option so let's copy this certificate and paste this certificate to the uh, client machine that is the bobs machine will will copy this certificate and paste it to the bob machine yeah we we copy and under dot uh, dot ssh folder we we will create a file id rsa that is the name of our private key and we'll add hyphen cert to that file and we'll add our certificate this is the path which by default ssh will use if you want to give your path explicitly you can name it whatever you want but if you want uh, it to implicitly use this you can use this so we'll paste our certificate here and now we will set the known host on on our on bob's machine because uh, our our client bob's machine don't know what certificate authority it needs to refer before accessing the ssh so we'll So here under .ssh file, we'll create a known host and we'll add our public key of our CA to this, this file. So for that, we'll add at the red cert hyphen authority. Then we need to specify a host. In this case, uh, we are just going to access our own machine only. So we can add a asterisk sign here. So it will refer this certificate, this public file for all the, all, all the SSH access. Now we'll copy the public key of the certificate from the CA server and we'll paste it to the Bob's machine. Here we, we paste this file and now we'll try to SSH into our log server. Uh, we'll try to access the log server from the Bob's machine. Now we try to SSH, SSH. Yeah, SSH, Ubuntu is the user and, and the IP of the logs machine. Now, we are just doing host key sh checking and permission deny. Can you tell me uh, what mistake I did? Anyone? Are you feeling sleepy after lunch? <laughs> Actually, I, I, I forgot to restart the SSH server. I changed SSH configuration here, but I forget to start the restart the SSH. So I have to go to the log server and uh, restart it back. So I'll go here, sudo service SSH restart. And after that, I'll try to SSH again. And it worked. Welcome to the log server. Here is the log server. Here is our message. So you just have to add some couple of couple of things to your servers. You just have to uh, this one time setup on your client and you can able to use the SSS certificate. So this is all from the demo. Now what we just did, uh, this is the quick recap of that. We'll create a CA certificate. We'll copy CA public key. We'll paste it to all our servers. Then we'll set this copied file as the trusted CA file and we'll restart the SSH. This time don't forget to restart. 
now on, on the client side we 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 need to create a public private key if it is not exist we'll create one intermediate certificate from the ca we'll paste that intermediate certificate from cs server and now here we'll set up the known host will copy the uh, public key of the ca to the known host and then we try to ssh into the our server now here is the uh, quick recap of the command as well what we we used ssh keygen is the open ssh uh, command uh, to which we'll give the source file that is the ca then we'll give identity that is bob then we'll provide principal whatever you want that could be developer uh, ops or whatever teams you have you can provide the roles you can add the validity uh, in this case one week the unique number and the client's file now to check the details of the certificate ssh key gen hyphen is l is for the content of the certificate and f is the file name now here are some features role based access so what do you need to uh, uh, implement the role based access you just need to add a principal file uh, on the server uh, it is a simple text file uh, and you can add all the roles in the new line separated way and after that in the ssh configuration you need to add this 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 line the authorized principal file and the path of the file and you will be able to create the role based access for your system now the second is host based access instead of using uh, providing access to a user you can provide access to a, uh, your host as well now certificate validity now it is recommended to give as minimal as possible uh, because uh, as we discussed if you give per, uh, ssh access uh, like certificate validity for like one day or one week or one year to uh, your employee and he left he still have access of your infrastructure because he have that intermediate certificate now the identity of certificate uh, so when you log log all all your ssh access either you you will create new user for for all the users you have in your company or you create a, you use identity certificate if you uh, so here we we provide the certificate identity uh, so now there are some cons as well uh, so when you rotate your ca when you rotate your certificate authority you have to update the public key on all the servers which you are using the second is if ca is leaked it's a single point of failure everyone can create uh, intermediate certificate and use it to ssh to your infrastructure so it's recommended to add a passphrase if it is not set and the revocation of intermediate certificate is not possible so it is recommended to give as minimal validity as possible now even ssh certificates are not secure you should be cautious when you are generating a intermediate certificate and you should uh, follow some good practices like add small small validity to the certificate uh, use bastion host so that instead of users machine you you can manage users from the bastion host uh, you can create all the users on bastion host and you can manage and provide intermediate certificate on the bastion host only you should rotate your ca private key regularly and must 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 add a passphrase while generating a ca certificate because it's important and if your ca certificate is leaked or compromised it will need password to get access or create a uh, new intermediate certificate now all we have so far all we have done is so so much effort you have to copy the public key to the all the servers then users public key you have to populate and generate an intermediate certificate so it's so much effort so we at moengage built a uh, open source project easy ssh uh, so what we we have done so far it's 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 
a three step process you just have to add your ip of the servers in the ansible inventory and you just need to run two script one to set up a ca server and other one is to set up the client so you can use this you can contribute to this uh, yeah so that's all from the talk here are the references questions so here for the example purpose i used a ca uh, you just need that certificate file only so you can keep it anywhere you can keep multiple copies of that if you uh it's a, it's a ansible script uh, i can add it at in the roadmap to do that as well yes yeah yeah so the question is role based uh, users are associated with the users or the system yes yes so uh, you create one file uh, in on the servers you create one file where you have multiple roles let's say there are devops there is a backend and there is frontend there are three roles you will add in the uh, new line separated way and while generating the intermediate certificate you will add this strings like backend uh, devops or the frontend in the comma separated way how you are managing the security of uh, security of the public key so you in ansible in ansible code you have everything at one place right uh -huh. so if that is compromised uh, it can be easily hacked right so it's a public key so you you might be having everything in ansible code your public key your uh -huh. ca and uh, whatever is uh, ca ha huh, yes yes so yes so how you are managing that because i have everything i can uh, i can you know uh, collate that information and uh, access the system whatever is required so uh, what you can do is uh, instead of keeping it the private uh, certificate at one place you can replicate it at all the places and the other thing you can do is giving access to this infrastructure the ca infrastructure it is not recommended so you should give this access to the uh, limited persons only to avoid this kind of situation because at the end it's a single single place where which is governing all these things so uh, pulkit will be around here outside maybe you can uh, catch him later uh, or yeah so thanks a lot pulkit uh,